Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And I got a really good question from one of my subscribers. Bryson asked about treating the room in the modal region, in the bass region, especially when the speakers cut off at around 40 hertz typically, right? Your two-way speaker. So is it even worth treating the room lower than that? Here's his question. I enjoyed your recent video on room plus speakers plus you, the acoustic trifecta. I was wondering if speaker cutoff is something you take into consideration. Example, if my speaker cuts off at 40 hertz, should I bother treating modal resonances below that? Should I do the treatment to, to make the studio future proof? Would love, love to know your thoughts. So thanks, first of all, Bryson. That's a great question. And uh, that's what I want to talk about in this video. What makes sense from a technical perspective? What makes sense from a cost perspective? And also just what is possible with the typical treatment that we have available for us in our home studio? But before I get into that, if you're wondering about the same issue, you're probably looking at bass trap designs online, whether you should build yourself, whether you should, you should just buy them off the shelf, and then most importantly, what type of bass trap works best in your room. If that's you, then I want you to download my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping completely for free at the link in the description. This is basically a kind of encyclopedia of all the different bass trap designs out there that I put together for you. And so it covers not only just all the different types of bass traps, but how they work. So you can actually identify what it is you're looking at when you're checking out different products or designs online, how many you would need, where to actually place them in your room, and obviously whether that then becomes the right solution, the way that you should go forward with in your particular room. So this is my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping. I think it's super useful if you're looking at treating your home studio. So make sure you download that at the link in the description. So let's get back to Bryson's question, whether you should actually treat your room below 40 hertz, the typical kind of cutoff where speakers basically stop producing bass. And the short answer to this question is absolutely. And the simple reason is obviously that long-term I want you to think about getting con control of the entire spect spectrum of the room, of the, of the music rather, uh, especially if you're thinking about getting a subwoofer because that will definitely play below your typical 40 hertz cutoff of your speaker. Obviously, the idea is to get low end extension from uh, a subwoofer. And the better the room is controlled in that area at that point, the better the sound will be, the more reliable your impression of the bass will be and the easier it will be to mix, right? So again, short answer, absolutely. But that said, looking at this from a technical perspective, it is not actually that easy to treat the lowest kind of 20 to 50 hertz range of the spectrum. And if you look at high-end studio designs out there from the likes of Northwood Acoustics, for example, about 80% of the effort and the budget go into just treating kind of the lowest octave in the studio. It is It requires a lot of treatment and very careful planning to actually make that happen. And that's why in a home studio setting, it can make sense to think about this more from an 80-20 perspective. Because if you are limited in time, budget, space, it obviously makes sense to see if you can find the best balance of all of these to really get the best bang for your buck for your home studio. So if you think about how much of the music actually happens in that lowest octave, typically kind of below 40 hertz, it's really not that much, right? I mean, I don't know what, 95% of the music and definitely the, the important bits happen much further up the spectrum. And so if you want to kind of get the best bang for your buck, if you think about it 80-20, then it might make sense to kind of skip that part or at least be more relaxed about treating that lowest part and really focus on treating everything above 40 hertz. And that should still give you 
a very useful sound and more importantly just a a, a reliable studio sound where you can consistently produce high quality uh, output in other words that will still give you a room that you can trust and that's why i laid out the design of my bass trap in the build a better bass trap online course that you can find on my website and also in the description in the way that i did right it's all about finding that kind of 80 20 sweet spot balance between cost effort use of space and then ultimately also acoustic effectiveness and then of course just very practically speaking with the the types of treatment that we have available to treat that lowest part of the spectrum none of those devices be they porous absorption or resonance devices just kind of cut off at 40 hertz so even if you set your target of treatment for the room at around 40 hertz you're still going to get some absorption below that even if the the effectiveness continuously drops off so what i want you to take away here is obviously it makes sense to try and treat the room down as low as possible in the spectrum just because the lower down you get the more control you have the easier it will be to mix your low end but in a home studio scenario it might make sense to think about it more strategically and then kind of applying an 80 20 principle uh, might make sense in order to get to, to find the right balance between cost effort and use of space and keeping that in perspective setting 40 hertz as a target makes sense in my opinion so with that let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio i'll see you in the next video